Yo, bro, who got you smiling like that? Like, kill the lights, okay? Today's video sponsor is GGG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I'm Shinkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So before starting today's video on the new Adrenaline 22.12.2 drivers, I just want to do a, a shout out, a shout, shout, out, out. Shout, shout out, out. shout out, yes, to AMB Trucking LLC for sending me 50 bucks. Okay, I received like 45 euros, so I, I kind of think it, it was 50 bucks and it says, this is for your hard work with AMD GPUs, thanks again. No man. I thank you, you for spending your precious money on my channel and trying to help or at least um, trying to help me or the channel, it doesn't really matter, but I thank you a lot for that. Yeah, thanks. Now if you follow the channel a lot, you may have asked yourself before, why didn't I make a review of the 22.12.1 drivers? And that's quite simple, because the review would be just that, me reading you the me reading you the, the release notes because there was nothing to compare to because it was the first drivers, they were the first drivers for the RX 7000 series GPUs and since they didn't work on the other GPUs like the RX 6000 series or 5000 series, well, I absolutely had nothing to compare the, the 22.12.1 drivers with, so it made no sense. Now, as for the 22.12.2, the case is different because now we have the 22.12.1 to compare the 22.12.2 with, which now makes sense. Now, these two drivers are kind of outliers. Usually, the, the AMD drivers work for all AMD GPUs, or at least for the most recent ones, for example, from Polaris and above, something like RX 580 and above, the AMD drivers work for all AMD GPUs over that. Uh, but these two are outliers and they are working just for the RX 7000 series. I mean, they work with your previous GPUs like RX 6000 and 5000, but you're most likely gonna have lots of issues, flickerings, blue screens, black screens, and so on. They are not meant for those GPUs, they're meant for the RX 7000 series. And I believe that AMD is doing this right now because the 22.11.2 drivers are basically rock stable, I wouldn't say rock stable, but they are pretty, pretty stable on the RX 5000 and 6000 series, and they are now focusing mostly on the RX 7000 series to bring the, um, the fastest and most stable options for the, current, for the current users actually buying those cards, because since they're top tier and users are actually paying big money, I do think that they deserve at least that, okay? Uh, fast and good, GPU updates. That's why I believe. But well, as usual, let's start with the release notes. We already have some really, really interesting fixed issues, with the first one being corruption may be encountered when using virtual super resolution with multi-displays configuration, multi-display multi or multi-display configurations. The second one is a system crash may be observed when changing display modes with four display configurations, meaning that people with four displays I do believe that they're fine now, at least with these drivers, uh, but AMD is working very hard to fix these issues and we see that with only uh, one week after the release, one week and a half maybe, things are already getting way better. While loading Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, an app crash or driver timeout may occur after enabling ray tracing settings, okay? I never had this issue, but it seems that it may happen and it seems that AMD also fixed it. Also, we have a very important one, which is improvements to power usage during hardware-accelerated video playback. Further power efficiency improvements are planned for future releases. If you watched the, the previous videos that I made, but most specifically this one, where I tested several undervolting and overclocking settings, I showed you that, well, these cards actually had messed up boost clocks. Even if you lock the, the FPS to a way lower number than the card could achieve, imagine that the card was making like 200 FPS. 
you would lock the FPS to 100 and the card would still push the max power, or in this case pull the max power of 350 watts, which makes absolutely no sense because even though you were locking the FPS, the boosts and the voltages were just going high to Try, trying to give you the, the best performance available, but at the same time you don't need that performance because you're locking the FPS. And it is fixed. They say it is fixed and it is fixed to a certain extent and I will show you later in the video, okay? Now as for the still known issues. The first one is high idle power has situationally been observed when using select high resolution and high refresh rate displays. Still, I do know that something like this was fixed for most users for example users using 4k displays the idle power draw actually went down from let's say 50 to 30 watts which is where it was supposed to be or even less than that 16 watts for example like i have on my 1440p 160 hertz 1440p ultra wide 160 hertz monitor okay so they have been fixing it and they will make it even better with time Intermittent app crashes or driver timeout may occur when using Radeon Super Resolution with some extended display configurations. This is something that comes from the previous drivers. Video stuttering or performance drop may be observed during gameplay plus video playback with some extended display configurations. Stuttering may be observed in Uncharted 4 A Thief's End during the opening game sequence. Something that I did not notice as well. While playing Volheim, an app crash or driver timeout may occur using Vulkan API. Any users who may be experiencing these issues should select DirectX API as a temporary workaround. I don't know if Volheim actually has the X12 or if it is the X11 and Vulkan, because if it is the X11 and Vulkan, well, the newer cards with the newer drivers can run the X11 pretty well. But if you're running, for example, an RX 5000 series or older, Going from the X11 to Vulkan makes a lot of difference and the game will perform way better in Vulkan. Unless you use the Amer Nimi Moda drivers which will in improve also the DX11 performance of the previous GPUs. Which is also an option if Vulkan is actually crashing for you in Volheim. And the last one is... Some virtual reality games or apps may experience lower than expected performance. And that's it, so an issue with VR. Something that we've been seeing quite a lot in the in the latest AMD drivers. So the 22.5.1 were quite fine in VR, at least from what people say, because I do not use VR. Um, some recent drivers are better than others, but AMD still has a problem in VR. So most likely, if you're going for virtual reality, you want to go NVIDIA. But that's all, because in terms of price performance, AMD now has really, really good offers, at least if you can find one at MSRP, uh, so $1,000 or lower than that. Um, but otherwise, full VR, NVD is the way, at least for now. Now, as for my experience with these drivers, as I told you, the boost clocks are quite different right now. The boost, the boost clocks were all over the place and the card was actually pushing the max boost clocks and the max voltage and the max wattage it could in order to perform the best it could but it, it was actually doing that in situations where it wasn't needed at all. So it was just uh, a waste of power draw, a waste of temperature, a wa not waste of temperature, but well, we, we have way higher temperatures, way higher power draws and way higher boost clocks than we needed, for example, in situations where the boost clocks were, were not the boost clocks, where the FPS were locked, which makes absolutely no sense. And I told you guys that it was broken and it needed to be fixed, of course. But with the 22.12.2 drivers, it seems that the boost clocks are way better than they were before. They are way more stable and they boost quite higher, okay? Higher clocks, more stable, and sometimes even with less power draw. How they should be from the beginning, usually. So the 22.12.2 drivers should have been the first drivers and not the 22.12.1, but anyway. They are working much better now, and in some cases, we're already getting better performance. I only tested one game, sorry for that, because I have lots of things to do, um, and this is actually the second video I'm doing today, so yeah. But I only tested Cyberpunk 2077, but the performance in the 1% lows is quite high already, and that's due to the boost clocks. We're testing 2300 to 2900, so basically we're allowing the GPU um, to boost up to 2900, which is basically the stock settings, to see how it performs. Let's watch. 
emotion at its best. Every verse I write is acid raining down on doubters next. And I'm creeping on you like a wand. Spritz a nine, nigga, ain't a wand. Sip a wand, nigga, 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 n
And well, as you saw, we can go even further on that same FPS target. We can go even further and tweak the GPU to have even lower power draw, meaning that the boost algorithm can still improve way more. It already improved. I mean, we're getting around 50 watts less than the previous drivers on the same frame targets of 100 FPS. But with the tweaked settings, we get the same exact 100 FPS and we get 50%, 50 watts less on top of the 50 watts that we already have, that we're already having lower than the first driver. So around, or let's say up to 100 watts less than the previous driver configuration of the 22.12.1. But once again, it was a very good improvement to the newest drivers and they will keep improving. But if you want to, tweaked settings is the way to go. Way lower temperatures, way lower power draw, the same FPS in most scenarios. It's a win-win situation if you're playing with locked FPS. Yeah. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Very good drivers from AMD. They still have some issues, of course. They're still, they're still some rough edges. But I must tell you that these are very, very good drivers from AMD. They already improved a lot of issues. They fixed a lot of issues. Uh, power draw is better. Boost clocks are better. So better performance lower power draw once again it's a win-win situation the idle situation power draw was also fixed the video playback power draw is also way better well all i can all i can wait for is better drivers in the future but i do believe that that is what amd will bring with time and is fine wine once again thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share this video and see you in the next one yeah that monitor already went down it actually knew that I was finishing the video, so anyway, see you in the next one, guys.